How much will my app cost if I migrate to AWS Cloud? Is it an affordable solution? Will I save some money or will it be much more pricey? If you have such question in mind or wonder how much AWS can cost you, please stop wondering. Instead, take the coffee and sit comfortably. In the next five minutes, I will explain to you how to estimate the costs of AWS. It's not a black magic or crystal gazing. It is just usage of great tool provided by Amazon called AWS Pricing Calculator. With its usage, you can predict your cost with high accuracy. Of course, the better you know your app and your user's traffic, the more accurate the predictions will be. If your app is a greenfield app, it's a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. You just have to make some assumptions. But no more talking. Let's see an example. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's assume we are developing the brand new Node.js app. We need a single middle size EC2 instance, RDS uh, Postgres database, and a few lambdas functions for batch operations to handle our traffic. To start the calculation, go to the calculator page and click Create Estimate. There is a search bar at the top of the page for filtering desired services. Let's type EC2 and click Configure on the first card. At the top of the Configure Amazon EC2 page, you have to, you have to pick the desired region. Uh, the price may differ based on the region. So pick the nearest region to your end users to avoid unnecessary latency. In my case, I will pick the London region and I will pick the quick estimate option beneath. The next section contains information about the EC2 instance itself. You have to set the number of CPUs, amount of memory, pick the operating system, uh, quantity, how many instances you need, and utilization, um, how long the how long in percent your app will be running during the month. So based on the data I provided, AWS proposed to me T4 large instance. So, so far so good. Let's move to the uh, two last sections. There you have to set the pricing model. Based on your need, you may pick options like on demand, the most pricey options, but you're not tied to AWS with any contract. Um, or you can pick some saving options. You will pay in advance for at least one year, but you will get discount. Finally, for EC2, you have to pick the type and size of the hard disk. For me, it's enough to have a 20 gigabyte general purpose SSD. I will keep my data inside the Postgres database, but I will use the RDS service. At the very bottom of the page, you can see the total estimation of costs of the EC2 instance. Click Add to the Estimate. After clicking at the Add to my Estimate button, you will see the summary page. The costs here are split into upfront monthly and yearly expenses. There is a list of estimated services as well, but currently I have added only one. So let's add a few more. For that, click uh, the Add Service button at the top right corner of the page. You will be redirected to the Picking Service page. This time we will add the Postgres database estimation. Search for the phrase RDS for PostgreSQL and click Configure. Similarly to the AC2 instance, I will pick the T4G large instance type. I will leave the default 100% monthly utilization settings, deployment to uh, multi AZ settings, and pricing model set as on demand. 
I need uh, 100 gigabyte of storage per month and the general purpose SSD option is sufficient. So my final calculation for uh, PostgreSQL is as follows. Again, click the Add to Estimate button and next on my Estimate page, click the Add Service button. Until now, things were simple. Now we will estimate the Lambda usage, which is a little bit more complicated, but fear not, we will face it. Mm. You can pick from two options at the top of the page. Lambda function include free tier and lambda function without the free tier. It's always better to look at the worst scenario on the topic of price predictions. If we would overestimate our costs, no worries. Worse, if we would underestimate. Besides that, if you are working in a big organization and estimating a new project, the chances are high that another of your projects has reached the free tier limits. Okay, but uh, moving back to our estimation. If you are developing a serverless app with uh, many of lambdas, I honestly don't have a good information for you. Because for lambda cost estimation, you have to provide the number of monthly requests. Yes, you have heard that correctly. You have to know how many invocations there will be. In a serverless API, it's most like a guesstimate, but not <laughs> estimate. Um, in my case, I know the concrete number of the requests. I only use the Lambda functions to generate some reports. There are three Lambdas uh, deployed, each invoked every hour, every day. So I will have three times 24 times 31 Lambdas invocations during the month. So it's like 2,232 invocations per month. Next, uh, you have to provide the average durations in milliseconds for lambdas functions. Another hard to tell parameter. Invocation times will differ for sure, but you should at least know if the time is in milliseconds, seconds, minutes or hours. Um, my lambdas do a minor job. From start to end, it's something about uh, 600 uh, milliseconds. The last parameter I have to fill is the amount of memory allocated. I need only 500 megabytes of memory. Then I will leave the rest of the settings empty. I don't need provisioned concurrency and I don't have any Lambda Edge. When we scroll to the bottom, we will see that the total estimation is around one cent. Yes, it's just a one cent. It's basically free. Depending on the usage, lambdas may be so cheap. Well, I told you that the app which we'll be estimating uh, would take advantage of three AWS services, EC2, RDS and PostgreSQL and AWS lambdas. So that's it, right? We did a whole calculation. Mm, in fact, not necessarily. Two things will affect your final bill and they are no so obvious at a glance. Mm. Firstly, how users of the app will communicate uh, with it? Of course, over the internet network. Aren't we need uh, some kind of NAT gateway for that? Mm, yes, we need it, and unfortunately, it's a paid solution. Next, uh, does our app produce some logs? Yes, it does. So we will highly likely use a CloudWatch. Again, another charge we didn't have in mind previously. So let's briefly add these services to our estimate. Mm, to estimate network costs, click Add Service and search for VPC. And then pick the right region and select Network Address Translation NAT Gateway in the section VPC Service. Then you have to provide a number of NAT networks and expected network transfer. Mm. So my, uh, my estimates are as follow. So yeah, that's it. We can add it to the total estimate. 
Lastly, let's add the CloudWatch to the estimate. For that, search for a CloudWatch. Again, I will set the region to equal to London. I expect to have uh, four metrics in my app. Then I will move to logs section. Here, I only set the amount of standard logs. For me, it will be only one gigabyte of storage. I will leave the rest of the settings empty. Again, I will click add to the estimate. So here you can see the final estimation. It's almost 341 USD per month. So that's it for today. You have learned the basics of the AWS pricing calculator. I highly encourage you to play with it for a while. It's a great tool for discovering the costs of the AWS cloud. Thanks for today and see you next time.